Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anjana Agarwal talking on time and energy management. This is a very very important lesson not only from the point of view the course but for everyone. Time and energy are our most precious resources. We must make best use of them. Time and tide wait for none. An individual should understand the value of time to succeed in all aspects of life. The people who waste time are the ones who fail to create an identity of their own. Time management refers to managing time effectively so that sufficient time is available for all required activities. Now we are talking about the time plan. Let us see what is time plan. An advanced plan of all the activities to be performed within the allotted time. It can be for a day, a week, a fortnight, a month or a year. Now we will talk about the time plan for daily activities. You can make your own chart yourself as per your requirement and your activities. For example, in this chart you can see the days on top Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and the time of different activities. For example, a person is getting up at 7 am then going for other activities by 8 am the person is ready by 9 or she takes the breakfast and by 10 he reaches to the office and by 11 there is a work time. So that is how you can do the time plan for daily activities. Let us understand the steps involved in making a time plan. First, list all the activities to be performed in the allotted time. Underline the activities to be performed at a definite time. Third, make an estimate of the time required for activities listed. Then arrange the activities in a sequence which are to be done. At the same time, you must keep in mind the time schedule of other family members and make necessary adjustments if required. We have to also plan the activities in such a way that they take less time and we are able to finish the work. How? Activities requiring similar equipment should be grouped together. In the end, write down the final plan. Now, in a day, there is some time which is known as peak load period. Why? Because the time is less and the number of activities we have to do. For example, in this picture, you can also see the women are making the breakfast, packing the lunch. The whole family is going for the work. Peak period is the period in which number of activities need to be performed in a small time. Another example, consider the activities during peak load period while making the time plan. Now, this kind of work may give you some kind of stress. So, let us see how to reduce that stress during peak load period. Take help of the family members. Take outside help to meet the demand. For example, you hire the maid to do the washing of the utensils, keeping the floor clean and dusting and other things. You can take the family members help to pick, pack the lunch. You can also apply the principles of work simplifications. We will learn these things little later. 
when we are talking about planning the activities and in this lesson we are also learning about the energy management here energy is the ability to do the work now we will combine all energy and the time available so that everything is done adequately and in less time and with less fatigue the whole is work organization what is that work organization is a planning arranging performing different activities in such a way that they are completed in the allotted time with minimum of energy expenditure how you can do it alternate heavy work activities with the light or moderate work activities this will prevent tiredness and improve work efficiency in this picture you can see the person is doing the floor cleaning this is a kind of heavy work particularly when you are doing by sitting and you can subsequently you can watch or relax yourself now we are dividing the type of work in three categories light work moderate work or heavy work or you can also do light work then do some heavy work then moderate work so whichever kind of activities you have and you have to complete you can plan the things let us understand what kind of activities are included in light work which uses minimum energy for example cutting vegetables dusting writing reading knitting etc and there are many moderate activities which uses medium energy for example cooking cleaning utensils cleaning other areas of the house sweeping dusting stitching etc but there are many heavy work which uses maximum energy mopping the floor washing clothes manually running climbing st stairs gardening etc now there is a concept called work simplification this is a concept to combine two things again managing the time and managing the energy available work simplification is a method of saving time and energy by using different methods such as using labor saving devices to complete the task in this two pictures you can see a lady is grinding the spices on the silbatta or you can say the stone so here the energy expenditure is too high because whole so many muscles are being used the same thing can be done in a grinder let us learn different other methods of work simplification very simple thing keep workplace organized here you can see major areas of the house there is one room where the study center is there everything is well organized there is a kitchen everything is well organized kept in the cupboard you can also plan in a way where you can do many activities at one place only so work simplification is performing any task in simplest way to conserve the energy and time can use many type of labor saving devices the mixer is there the peeler is there washing machine is there the rack is there you can dry the wash utensils at the same time and the cleaning can also be done by the electrical cleaner now you can also use the appropriate work movement how you can use the peeler instead of the knife 
so it will require less movement you can organize or design the kitchen in a way so your work movement are reduced so keep the kitchen sink and the cooking range in the same area you can also make the work sequence changes one after the another so th next you can do appropriate posture which is very very important because the same thing if you are doing like this you will have to use more energy if you are sitting like this properly you will not be fatigued very easily so height is very important so work at the appropriate height you can see variety of pictures the how the utensils are there the lady is not bending at all so when you are planning the kitchen you have to see at what level the surface area has to be you cannot bend like this and do all the work so height is very important whether you are doing the work in the office or you are working in the home now there is a very interesting concept called dovetailing some people know it some people do it without knowing the concept this is called dovetailing it is a term used for combining two or more activities at the same time for example washing clothes in the washing machine and cooking food at the same time so washing machine is running cooking is also being done and when the things are in cooker you can chop the other vegetables you can knead the dough so many activities are being done you can also make your child sit to get, uh, nearby and ask to do the homework you can also switch on the uh, phone or you can also switch on the radio program so you can have the entertainment at the same time some more methods are also available you can think n number of methods to do the dovetailing or appropriate work organization use the ready to eat items but from health point of view is not always advisable adopting attractive workplace it gives you an energy to do the work and perfect your skills if you know how to do the action or any kind of activity that will definitely reduce the time spent and the energy now why we are talking about we have to reduce the fatigue what is fatigue fatigue is a feeling of tiredness causing the desire to stop the work and that is fatigue it occurs due to unsatisfactory work and work conditions another physical exertion because energy is utilized for physical activities and because of that you are exhausted you can also categorize the fatigue psychological fatigue or physiological fatigue psychological fatigue can also be of two types boredom fatigue and frustration fatigue psychological fatigue are done because you do not like to work or you do not feel like that work interest you but physiological fatigue occurs when your body energy utilized in many physical activities let us see boredom fatigue when you do not have the activities which is interesting to you or that is monotonous so you feel restless yawning desire to sleep whatever but you do not like that we call it boredom and another is your fatigue when your body is in discomfort you are not feeling well or you are unsatisfactory with the results so you want to escape that situation why happen because when the worker is in experience disturbed too often worried overworked or not enough appreciated so much stress so much fatigue but there are ways to reduce the fatigue take rest whenever 
possible or applicable. Alternate light and heavy tasks. Use labor saving devices. Delegate some work to others. Make work interesting. Work in group instead of alone. Have a proper workplace. Proper equipment. Develop skill at work. Make atmosphere pleasant. Reduce mental tension. Appreciate the work. And give rewards for good work. In this lesson, you have learned what is time management, what is work organization, what are the ways you can reduce the energy input and get maximum output with the less amount of time. And you have also learned various ways to reduce the fatigue, reduce the stress. Thank you. I hope you have learned the lesson good enough and please apply all these principles of time and energy management in your daily life in different activities you will be successful.